Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Jen Lunsford, and I'm the Democratic candidate for State Assembly in the 135th District. That includes the towns of Webster, Penfield, East Rochester, and Perriton. Today, I'd like to give you an overview of the uh, New York Pandemic Unemployment Program and answer some questions that have arisen as this process unfolds. Uh, I apologize here for the disclaimers, but because I'm a practicing Good attorney. Thank um, you for today. Oh, goodness, I'm sorry. Jen Lunsford, and I'm the Democratic candidate for State Assembly. Sorry. Got two YouTubes going on here. Um, so what I wanted to say is uh, because I'm an actual practicing attorney, I do actually need to give you a disclaimer that um, if you, uh, this is not legal advice and I am not your attorney. If you do have questions specific to your situation, you should contact an attorney directly. Uh, given the circumstances that we're in, uh, we are seeing a huge influx of unemployment claims as a result of the pandemic and the resulting closures. Uh, what we're trying to do here today is to give people a background in how unemployment works normally, and then also to uh, integrate some of the updates that have arisen with the Federal CARES Act and also some of the new state level programs that have uh, been put in place since this first uh, began on January 27th. Um, again, I want to thank everyone for joining me today. I'm trying to slow up a little bit to give some people more, more time to come in, but um, New York has taken steps to expand benefits to those that don't normally receive them and to provide assistance for a longer period of time than we have previously given them. Uh, under the Federal CARES Act, additional funds have been made available to those receiving unemployment to help close the gap between what people were making before and what regular state level unemployment generally provides. Uh, today I'll be discussing the way regular unemployment works in terms of eligibility and benefits, and I'll weave in the ways the government has expanded those benefits due to the pandemic. Then at the end, I'm gonna discuss some practical tips and guidelines for applying and address a few of the specific questions we received uh, prior to this program. If I have time, I will try to get to some questions on the YouTube chat, so feel free to uh, put them there. Under normal circumstances, New York provides unemployment benefits to those who are monetarily eligible, who lost their job through no fault of their own, and who are ready, willing, and able to look for new work. I'm going to briefly discuss monetary eligibility, but it's a bit complicated, so bear with me. I do this for the benefit of those with fluctuating income or spotty job history, um, and I received some questions about whether teenagers are able to collect unemployment. And the answer to that is yes, because there's no age requirement in New York, but you have to meet all of the monetary eligibility components. In a nutshell, that means that one has worked in a job that's covered by unemployment insurance in two calendar quarters, a quarter is three months. These quarters don't need to be consecutive, but they need to have occurred in the last 15 months. So let's talk about Jane Doe, a fictional woman applying for unemployment. Jane had a job from say March to July of 2019 and then was unemployed and got a new job in October. That then ended in January. Jane would meet the criteria because she worked two quarters in the last year. Now, if someone has not worked two quarters in the last 15 months, there is an alternate base period they can use, but explaining that will get us a bit into the weeds. And if you are in that situation, you should contact a lawyer or frankly, just try applying and see what happens. The second criteria for monetary eligibility is being paid at least $2,600 in one calendar quarter, so a three month period. And then the third is that the total wages paid must be one and a half times the amount paid in the highest quarter. So say Jane made $3,000 in one quarter, she needs to have made at least $4,500 overall in that base period. There are some carve outs for people uh, in situations directly affected by COVID-19 where one could apply for unemployment even without meeting these criteria. Uh, for example, if one was working and lost income as a result of being diagnosed with COVID-19 themselves, having a family member diagnosed with COVID-19, being a primary caregiver for a child unable to attend school, being advised by a medical provider to self-quarantine due to being in a high-risk category, say you were unable to actually reach your workplace because of a COVID-19 closure, or you've suddenly become the head of household because the primary breadwinners passed away as a result of the disease, you might qualify. The second criteria for unemployment eligibility is that someone has lost work through no fault of their own, and that's not as intuitive as it sounds. That can mean that a worker was laid off as a result of a business closing or that their position was eliminated, but it can also mean that they were furloughed. So while they're still technically employed by their company, 
they can still receive unemployment benefits during that furlough period. Under the new Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program, PUA or PUA, self-employed people, independent contractors, and gig workers like Uber drivers whose earnings have declined more than 10% are eligible to apply, but note, they have to apply for regular state unemployment benefits and be denied first. The new streamlined application that just came out on the Department of Labor website last Friday allows you to apply for both programs simultaneously. And also, while a worker who quits can't normally get unemployment, if a worker's in a high risk category of developing complications from COVID-19, like say they have asthma or diabetes or an autoimmune disorder, and they request leave from their employer who then denies them, they may quit and receive unemployment. The last category of unemployment is being ready, willing, and able to work, which means that there's nothing preventing a person from seeking employment like disability or being physically out of the area. Everyone applying for unemployment is required to state that they're ready, willing, and able to work both on the application and each week when they certify for benefits. As we sit here today, the old rules still apply, but the Department of Labor is reviewing this requirement in light of the pandemic as it creates a certain complication. The question really becomes whether a worker can say that there's nothing preventing them from doing work within the restrictions of these circumstances. Now I'm going to discuss a little bit about how benefits are calculated. Under regular state unemployment, benefits are usually half of a worker's average weekly wage up to a maximum cap of $504 a week. So for example, if Jane normally makes $600 gross per week, her benefits will be $300 per week. If her brother John normally makes $1,200 per week, his benefits will be 504 because he exceeds the max. If your wages vary, it can be complicated to calculate your benefits. So I recommend you Google New York Department of Labor benefit rate calculator to help you calculate what your benefits would be. Under the Federal CARES Act, there's an additional $600 being made available to recipients of unemployment through July 31st, 2020. These benefits are then retroactive to January 27th. So if Jane had already applied for unemployment, her $600 would start automatically and go back to the date she was unemployed, assuming that was after January 27th. Also, the benefit period has been expanded. Normally, the unemployment benefit period is 26 weeks, but an additional 13 weeks has been added on to the end. Um, if you have recently been on unemployment and blown through that 26 week period, there is now a program for you to potentially apply for that additional 13 weeks. Now I'm going to address a few of the questions we received prior to this program. Um, as I stated earlier, anyone seeking benefits under the expanded PUA program must first apply for regular state unemployment. The application for that is now on the Department of Labor website and they let you apply at the same time for both programs. If a worker applied before last Friday, they must separately apply for PUA on the unemployment.labor.newyork.gov site. And I believe they can do so while their regular unemployment application is still pending. Um, as I'm sure you've heard, it is virtually impossible to get through the Department of Labor on the phone at the moment. For those that were told to call to complete their applications, the Department of Labor will call you. I know they said they would call within 72 hours and many people still haven't received a call that's not a function of anything being wrong with your application, but rather just a manpower issue. The Department of Labor is trying to scale up staffing now. There has also been an issue with people being unable to sign in uh, because their account already has a username that they don't recall. In New York, if you have one account for any state business, you're, that's your account for all state business. So if you logged into the DMV and created an account there, that's your sign in for the Department of Labor as well. If you cannot remember your username, please click forgot username and password. If you try too many times, you will get locked out and have to call to get your account unlocked. And as I said, it's almost impossible to get through on the phones. If you're already in the situation where you're locked out and can't sign in, I have two suggestions. One person told me that they were successful by making a new email address and trying to create a whole new account. However, if you created your prior account and linked it to something like your social security number or your driver's license number, you probably aren't gonna be able to create a new account. Otherwise, you could try calling your state senator or assembly person who is not me yet, but hopefully will be next year uh, and see if they can help you. That's the only way I've heard of people bypassing the system when they're locked out from their username. Um, another thing I highly recommend is please select direct deposit if possible 
because that will help shorten the time it takes to get you your money and limit unnecessary trips to the bank. Um, I received some questions from some people uh, who've been in a holding pattern for several weeks where they applied and they just haven't heard. When you apply for unemployment, even under normal circumstances, your employer is required to certify certain pieces of information. When you started work, when your last day worked, and why you separated from your employment. If your employer isn't responding, that in and of itself can cause a delay. Uh, there's also a manpower problem just regarding the number of people who are processing applications. However, if you've been waiting for a month or more, again, I'm going to suggest you call your state level representative to see if they can make an inquiry on your behalf. Uh, if you find yourself in a situation where you can't pay your bills, um, as I've said before, please try calling people to whom you owe money before you miss a payment. It is much, much easier to fix that on the front end than on the back end after you've already missed the payment. Um, I was able to get through the bulk of this information pretty quickly. I'm going to give people a, like a minute to send any questions they might have to the YouTube chat. Um, I'm hoping to wrap this up in half an hour. Uh, so if anyone has any questions, please uh, hop onto the YouTube chat here and send them along. If uh, there's a question that is very specific to you, I encourage you to please contact me at jen at votejenlunsford.com and ask that question there. Um, that might allow me to uh, refer you to the appropriate resources and maybe send you um, documents or other kinds of guidelines that might help elucidate the situation for you. Um, while I'm waiting, I'm just going to remind people that you can learn more about me and uh, my campaign at votejenlunsford.com. You can follow me on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, also at votejenlunsford.com. So facebook.com slash votejenlunsford.com. Um, I encourage you to do that and to uh, sign up for our um, newsletter to keep up with what we're doing in our campaign and to, to continue to reach out to me as a resource. Uh, even if I can't answer your question, I hopefully can find someone who can. So I'm happy to uh, act as a hub for people. Uh, I am not seeing any questions right now. So I want to thank everyone so much uh, for your time today. This ended up being pretty short, um, but hopefully you know, it's, there was a lot of information and I know it can be really overwhelming. I'm going to post uh, this video with captions later and I'm going to include some links uh, to some of the sites that I uh, mentioned earlier and also to um, some documents that can help expand on some of the uh, exceptions and carve outs that I was discussing. Um, I wanna thank everyone so much for your time and uh, to remind you to stay safe, stay strong, that you know we'll get through this and I'm here for you no matter what happens. Thanks so much, have a great day.